And we're straight in the action then on the uh, Casino Battle Royale here at AEW All Out. We're starting off with uh, Darby Allen against Ray Phoenix. Darby straight on the offense, taking it to Ray Phoenix. He wants that world title shot. And the next competitor is about to enter the countdown already. Uh, the member of Team Taz is Ricky Starks. He's been so impressive since he debuted in AEW. That, oh, and he goes straight for Darby Allen. We've seen Ricky and Darby have a bit of a heated rivalry. And I said Darby Allen is eliminated. That's got to be a huge upset. You'd have thought he'd have been one of the favourites to win this match. And is Ricky on the way out as well? Ray Phoenix wants that world title shot. Oh, and we've got the Butcher. The Butcher from the Butcher of the Blade is uh, making an appearance in the Casino Battle Royale. Phoenix hits him with the uh, sliced toast number two, I think. Yeah, Phoenix has been so impressive around the world at AAA Impact, Lucha Underground. Now absolutely killing it over in AEW. Oh, and it's, it's Gentleman Jervis. What a surprise entrance into the Battle Royal. We'd expected a couple of surprises, but... Uh, I respect Gentleman Jervis, we've never seen him on AEW before. The world's sweetest man and the butcher welcoming him to all elite wrestling. On the next entrant, Mark Quinn from Private Party, who's been so impressive as well since uh, the start of AEW. He'll be looking for that world title shot. Of course, Matt Hardy taking Private Party under his wing recently, trying to show him the show them the ropes, show them the way. Gentleman Jervis is uh, thinking, oh, what's he got himself into? Action all over the place here. Ricky Starks looking to eliminate Phoenix in the corner. The Butcher is just going for Jervis. He does not like this newcomer at all. And the next entrance in, Billy Gunn. Of course, Billy Gunn, half of the uh, the Gun Club, the father and son, and he goes straight for Jervis. And Jervis has been eliminated. What a what a hazing he has had tonight. What a welcome to AEW that was. And could Billy be next to go? Butcher's going for him. Of course, Phoenix has been in this match since the since the very beginning, and now the Blade is making his way to the ring. Of course, the Butcher's tag team partner from Butcher and the Blade. The standard here in AEW just yet. Up and then goes Ray Phoenix. Billy Gunn has eliminated him. And speaking of Gunn, here comes his son, Austin Gunn. Both father and son in the match now. As well as the, uh, both the Butcher and the Blade. Be interesting to see how these tag teams work together. I think you had that planned. And of course, in at number 10, None other than Sean Spears, the perfect 10. The action all over the place here. Oh, and the blade might be, the blade might be on his way out. Oh, and a Canadian destroyer there from Mark Quinn. The butcher displaying a huge amount of strength. Which should be on the way out. Number 11 on his way to the ring. Chuck Taylor. One, one half or one third of the best friends. He's in the best friends. And goes straight for the butcher. Oh, and that's uh, Mark Quinn has been eliminated by Ricky Starks. Still the uh, longest person in this match coming in at number three. You gotta think all of these men want a shot at that world title. That's what it's all about. You got a lot of uh, up and comers. You know the likes of Ricky Starks. You've got a lot of people who've been there and done that, like Billy Gunn, who have been to the top. Oh, and there goes Chucky T, and there goes Ricky Starks as well. Action spilling all over the place here. Oh, 
Now you gotta think at this point you have to say the Butcher is the favourite by far. Oh, he's going for his tag team partner, the Butcher looking to eliminate the Blade. With a bit of help from Austin Gunn, who looks to have been busted wide open. Yes, he has. Oh, Sean Spears with the kicks to uh, Billy Gunn there. You gotta think as this match goes on, how will. Well, we've already seen one tag team fall apart in the Buffalo and Blade, and there goes Austin, just gives his. Uh, is that a backbreaker? Oh, and speaking of um, big men, on his way, the uh, murder hawk, I think he's called, Lance Archer. He says everybody dies, but tonight he's saying everyone gets eliminated from this rumble. Yeah, what a theme that is. I'd love to... Um, Billy's just going for his son there, taking it to Austin, giving him a... Uh, I don't know, some stern parenting or something. I, I was trying to think of... Oh, Meg, who's Billy? I was trying to think of something funny to say, but I couldn't think of anything. And here comes the other half of Private Party, Isaiah Cassidy. Was picking up huge wins in his time in AEW, defeating the likes of the Young Bucks. Oh, and there goes. Oh, I didn't quite see who that was. Sean Spears, and now the Butcher has been eliminated as well. Austin Gunn looking sharp in this match, it must be said. Now taking it to Isaiah Cassidy. Oh, and here he is, the machine! Ryan Cage. This man not only has a strength but also the agility. You have to consider him a favourite in this match. And Cage going straight for Austin Gunn with the help of Isaiah Cassidy. Oh, and Austin hangs on. Lance Hawk is. Um, Lance Hawk. Lance Archer just taking a breather there in the corner. As our next entrant is about to... Oh, and it's Pentagon Jr. Pentagon Jr., of course, a former world champion in his own right. Be looking to set his sights on the AEW world title. True Star says that AEW signed a lot of Impact stars. I think they did, because um, at the time, Impact were doing some good stuff, and then... I don't know, I guess they just didn't have the financial backing that someone like Tony Khan had, and then... Yeah, to be fair, at the time, Impact probably was the second biggest promotion in America, so... Other than the WWE guys, that is where they get most of their guys. As Lance Archer looks to be... Oh, he hangs on. They're still looking to get rid of him. I've lost count of how many people have entered the Casino Battle Royale, but there can't be many left now. Uh, we've had 17, and number 17 is Eddie Kingston, the King. Who again has been so impressive since joining AEW, making his debut. A TNT title match against Cody, answering the open challenge. And he could receive another title shot tonight if he wins the Casino Battle Royale. Going for 18. Oh, it's uh, Frankie Kazarian from SCU. He says, this is the worst town he's ever been to. Of course, yeah, going back to what you said, True Star, Kazarian, um, of 
course, formerly Impact. Yeah, and um, you're right as well. Today would have been um, Hannah Kimura's birthday, which, um, you know, reminds you of the tragic incident what um, that happened. And you said you saw AEW yesterday. I thought a um, really nice touch for Kenny Omega wearing the Hannah Kimura t-shirt. I thought that was, um, you know, that was a nice touch. And look at that, Brian Cage just lifts Lance Archer up like he's like he's nothing, like he's a regular sized person. Eddie Kingston there going for Trent in the corner. <laughs> no, I, I barely remember Trent on EC though. I like I vaguely remember it. But... Right, so you're going back some time now. I like I think it took me a long time to realise that that was the same person, like the same Trent. Yeah, some some really like random happenings on ECW back then. Uh, of course, like some good superstars came from it. You know, your CM Punk's, your Sheamus's, your Coffee Kingston's. But um, I was pent to get eliminated by uh, Frankie Kazarian there. What are we on? Is this number number twenty? Number 19, Jake Hager from the Inner Circle. As Eddie Kingston gets eliminated there, you gotta think with the size of Jake Hager, look how big he is. He's gotta be considered a favorite here. And there goes Lance Archer, Brian Cage just tosses him out. Now we're going for Austin Gunn, who has been so impressive in this match. And True Star says he um, likes to get on your knees theme from uh, Jake Hager back in his world title days. Yeah. Um, fun fa Oh, there goes Austin Gunn. Fun fact that song sounds so much like Rage Against the Machine. It's actually a Rage Against the Machine cover band because they wanted Rage Against the Machine, but they didn't want to pay the royalties. So yeah, it's just like a Rage Against the Machine tribute band. Um, but yeah, good, good feel. And now, as we await the final entrance of the Casino Battle Royale, who could this be? Oh my god, you've got to be kidding me! Wrestling's hottest free agents after his WWE contract has expired, it's Brock Lesnar. He is all elite and he is in the Casino Battle Royal. Absolute scenes as the crowd are going absolutely berserk. Wow, I did not expect this, Brock Lesnar. Truestar says this would break the internet. Like, imagine. You know, the actual Casino bo uh, Battle Royal has 21 entrances, uh, tw 21 entrants in them. Five of each. Uh, thank you, um, Faze Un Unknown No, and also uh, Boboff74G for the. Uh, Frenchy mate as well. Thanks. Welcome. Wait, what is? Wait, did I get raided or something? Oh yeah, okay, yeah, I'm on the raid. Yeah, thank you, um, KDGX24 for the raid. Uh, we're doing the AEW. Oh, wow, thank you everyone for all the follows. This is uh, pretty mad. I can't even keep up with it. But yeah, we're on the um, AEW All Out, simming the full card on uh, 2K20. This is the Casino Battle Royal. We just had our final entrant, Brock Lesnar, wrestler's hottest agent, has just entered the match. We still have Jake Hager, um, the machine Brian Cage. Who else is still in? Frankie Kazarian and Trent. But yeah, how was... Um, how was your stream, KDGX? What um, 
what game were you, were you guys playing? As Kazarian has just eliminated Trent, there he's gone. And big throw from uh, from Lesnar. But Lesnar just taking it to these guys. Like Hager has maybe experienced the uh, physicality of Lesnar before, but he likes a Kazarian and look at Hager taking it to Brian Cage there. Yeah, you guys are crazy. Like I can't even. I don't know if I've had like this many people on a stream before, so I don't know if I can even like keep up with this chat, but. Yeah, you guys are awesome, like, thank you for joining. Oh, you've been playing 2K as well, that's, uh... Ah, pretty cool. But yeah, do you guys, you guys like AEW? You're watching all that? Oh, and there goes Brian Cage, he's been eliminated. No, oh, Jake Hager. Oh, and Jake Hager has just eliminated Brock Lesnar. And we're down to our final two. Jake Hager, of course, looking to bring that AW title back to the inner circle. After Chris Jericho had a little bit too much of a bubbly and lost it to John Moxley. We'll see Moxley defending it tonight against MJF. But now, who's it going to be? Jake Hager from the inner circle of Frankie Kazarian from SC a big boot there. Hager's just taking it to Kaz. I wish Jericho was still champ as well. He was he was very entertaining. <laughs> I know like people were complaining when Jericho got drunk and lost the belts. And I was like, oh, and there he is, the winner, Jake Hager, be looking to bring the title back. Wow. And a huge upset as well. Brock Lesnar is all elite, but he couldn't get it done. He'd have been hoping to win the Casino Battle Royal on his debut and uh, get the world title shot, but it wasn't to be. They're having a tag team match as the Young Bucks, the team of Matt and Nick Jackson, take on, as JR calls him, Jungle Boy Jack Perry and Luchasaurus. We're like, no, what are you doing? Like, he can't join the elite. They let him in. Let Kota Ibushi into the elite and call it the golden elite. As this match is uh, straight in the way, we got, um, who's this? Matt Jackson. And we're going against Jungle Boy, Jack Perry. Tanahashi versus Omega, of course, the uh, main event of Wrestle Kingdom. 14? 13? 13, I'm going to say. And Jungle Boy tags in uh, Luchasaurus. Of course, Luchasaurus with a huge size advantage. Just throw in... No, I... <laughs> yeah, yeah, join, join the Discord. I've, I've literally just made it. I think if you, if you join, you'd probably be like the first person to join it, even. Um, I don't really know what I'm going to use it for just yet, but I thought I'd make one, so come hang out. Oh, Luchasaurus, big fist there to uh, Matt Jackson. Of course, yeah, like, you normally have faces and heels in a match, and you'd have to think, in this match, the Young Bucks are going to be the heels, like, they've been acting like pricks recently. As the action spilled to the outside of the ring, Luchasaurus goes straight into the steps. We trade in forearms here. Oh, strong style here. Matt and Nick will be used to that, but uh, Luchasaurus really bring it to them. A lot of people don't know, actually. Luchasaurus used to be signed to WWE. Um, like, he, he wasn't like a big star or anything, but he was there for a brief period. Was he? Well, I don't think he was called Luchasaurus at the time. Cutting the ring in half by bringing Luchasaurus over into their corner. The um, Young Bucks have won tag team titles everywhere they've been. They've they've won like every tag team title there is, other than the AEW tag titles, which is, has eluded them since the start of all elite wrestling. 
you got to think, is that play? Yeah, well, yeah, not an impact as well. But I contest that wasn't the young bucks. That was that was generation generation me, I think. The team of Matt and Nick Buck, I think they were going by at the time. But yeah, this was second match of the night after the Casino Battle Royale, where Jake Hager was victorious. A big suplex there from Jungle Boy, and he's going for it again. Shades of a young Eddie Guerrero there. The three amigos. Is that enough to put him away? That ran Do you remember who he was, True Star? Like that random manager in one of the teams, and then he started managing the other. Uh, thank you, Dante Ravioli, for the follow. Appreciate that. Welcome to the stream. WWE 2K20. This is the second match for the Jurassic Express against the Young Bucks as Jungle Boy goes up high, big leg drop there. It nearly puts him away there. Yeah, so I only knew Sergeant Slaughter from like a big 619 there from Jungle Boy. Sergeant Slaughter would just like sometimes turn up on Raw and just like randomly have a match. So like I only knew him from that, but he used to be a WWE champion. Like he was quite a big name. I think he like main evented WrestleMania against Hulk Hogan. Like Sergeant Slaughter was quite a big deal at the time. He was also, I believe he was like the general manager Raw at one point in like the late 90s. Uh, Jungle Boy tags in Luchasaurus. Uh, rock bottom there from Jackson. Nick Jackson taking it now to uh, Luchasaurus. Of course, we've seen quite a mean streak from the Young Bucks recently. Um, these two teams teamed up together to defeat um, SCU and I think it was Butter on the Blade on Dynamite last night. Um, Young Bucks picking up the win, but not even shaking hands and not even celebrating with, um, I was going to call them the Luther Express, that's not their name, the Jurassic Express. Adam Cole and the, uh, uh, the, I guess you could call them the elites. They were all in the elite, but when you say the elite, you don't. Oh no, was Adam Cole? No, he wasn't in the elite. Oh, sorry, I'm thinking Bullet Club. Um, but yeah, when, when you say Bullet Club, you don't necessarily think of those three. And that could be it. Is Luchasaurus? Luchasaurus has picked up the win for his team. Luchasaurus and uh, Jungle Boy, Jungle Jack celebrates. The Dark Order taking on the team of Scorpio Sky, Matt Cardona, Dustin Rhodes and Cutie Marshall. Woo woo woo, you know it. As we have this eight-man tag team. The team of the Dark Order, Brody Lee, Eva Luno, Colt Cabana, Stu Grayson. Taking on the team of Dustin Rhodes, Cutie Marshall, Scorpio Sky and... Uh, Matt Cardona, we're gonna call him from now on. Before he was called Edge, his name was Sexton Hardcastle, which is a pretty great name. And we're off here yeah, for his match of the evening. The team of the Dark Order up against uh, Cutie Marshall, Dustin Rhodes, Scorpio Sky, and Matt Cardona. Cutie tags in his partner, Dustin. Yeah, big drop kick there from Cutie Marshall. As the Dark Order are pleading to get tagged in. Mr. Brody Lee does not look impressed there. In the, I've just realised what he's wearing, actually. That, those are some wavy garments. That is a fashion statement there from Brody Lee. Mr. Brody Lee, excuse me. Grayson now taking it to uh, the Apple Man. 
QT Marshall. As number two tags in number one, Evil Uno. Evil Uno, of course, I think it'd be fair to say that he's probably second in command to Mr. Brody Lee in the, the Dark Order pecking order. Oh, and um, suplex into a neck breaker there. QT Marshall has been uh, pretty impressive in this match, actually. I was expecting him to get flattened by the Dark Order, but doing well so far. Now taking it to Evil Uno on the outside. And Uno gets, gets him back inside the ring. Of course, you need to be inside the ring to win this match. Uno had the option there of tagging one of his partners, but he decided against it. He said, I've got it. Oh, now he's living to regret that with a big punch to the face. Marshall goes for the pin. Oh, and Cole Cabana breaks up before he can get to free. Now taking him back to the corner. Oh, and here comes the boss, he's had enough of this. He says, if you want something done right, you've got to do it yourself, as Mr. Brody Lee tags himself into the match and gets a, gets a forearm to the face for his troubles. Evil Uno still hasn't left the ring after being tagged out. He's absolutely gassed there in the corner. Big crossbody there to Mr. Brody Lee. Now we see... SCU's Scorpio Sky tagged in. Of course, Mr. Brody Lee has been so impressive in AEW since he uh, since he made the jump over from WWE and revealed himself as the leader of Dark Order. SCU, there's a uh, true star in the chat. And we spoke a bit about uh, Chris Daniels and also about PCO wrestling until late in their career. When you mention those guys, I think this is a guy you have to mention, uh, Dustin Rhodes. Proving that 50 is the new 40. SCU are, SCU are cool. I just love, like, shouting out their catchphrases and I think Scorpio Sky is like he's going to be a big star I think he could like out of the three of them he's the one that could like go and be AEW champion one day oh a big splash from Mr. Brody Lee but he misses with the veteran uh, Dustin Rhodes ring away in a spare high ring IQ to roll up away Of course, it could be argued, but the Dark Order is not the first cult that Mr. Brody Lee has been a part of. Previously, the Wyatt family. I don't know why he's still wearing his jackets in the ring. He's got to be... Oh, oh, and the Sister Abigail, speaking of Bray Wyatt. Brody Lee with the sister Abigail. We'd love to see it, and that could be it. Not quite. What happened to you when you got a Chris Bay? What he just wore? I oh, guess they're supposed to have like two attires: one to walk to the ring and one to actually wrestle in. But I, I guess this is like his entrance attire but he's just wearing it for the match i think maybe he didn't he expected a big discus lariat there he expected 
these um, Dark Order lackeys. Oh, and there it is. Brody Lee almost single-handedly winning this match for the Dark Order. Just as I was saying, he probably expected not to have to involve himself in this match, which is why he was still wearing his jacket. But when Evil Uno was getting beaten up, he, Brody Lee had... Look, there it is, Evil Uno just getting flattened. Brody Lee had no choice but to tag himself in and picks up the win for his team. The Dark Order, victorious here. It is again big... Uh, as they say, join Dark Order. It is not a pyramid scheme. It is not a cult. The coolest thing about Dark Order, they uh, joindarkorder.com is an actual website, and if you go on it, you can actually sign up to uh, to join. Although I did register, they haven't got back to me yet. So that was that. Now this is the match I think everyone has been waiting for. Also the match I think no one really quite, oh, I don't know, what goes through the mind of Chris Jericho. But unfortunately, 2K20 does not have the uh, Mimosa match built into it. So um, we've just got a straight up singles match between these two. And we're off, Mimosa Mayhem match as uh, Orange Cassidy brings it straight to Chris Jericho. The Demo God, yes, that's right. The Demo God knows what's good for ratings, apparently. Even though he himself is almost outside of the, uh, the demo at 49 years old. And again, it seems to be a running theme, but. Uh, older wrestlers who are absolutely killing it towards their 50s so yeah I just googled it mimosa is basically just some kind of champagne and orange juice mixed together which actually makes perfect sense when you're looking at uh, when you think about it because he's orange Cassidy and Jericho is all about the bubbly so yeah when you mix the two together you get a mimosa I I can't believe that took me so long to realise that's what the joke was. Yeah, big elbow from Orange Cassidy there. Of course, du uh, during this rivalry, Jericho has done everything he can to make Orange Cassidy look like a fool. But it's backfired because at every, every twist and turn... That be it, roll up. Every twist and turn, Orange Cassidy has just been coming out looking like even more of a star. Belly to belly suplex there from Jericho. Cassidy goes for the pin, looking to put Jericho away early. New Japan set up a UK shop, that would be that would be good. So we'll have to pay the uh, the crazy shipping charges from abroad. Uh, speaking of New Japan, Chris Jericho is a former IWGP Intercontinental Champion. Of course, defeating Naito for that belt. Uh, Trista says he's got the... Um... Oh, is that the free count? The pool of Mimosa was not needed because Orange Cassidy has picked up a win here. As we watch the highlights, Jericho going for the spawn package, but it wasn't enough to put Cassidy away. Cassidy keeping his sunglasses on almost the entire match.
speaking of hurt, this tough and nail match, um, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD making her return against Big Swole. Um, I don't know what a, uh, a tough in nail match involves, but if it's anything like the WWE's loser has their eye taken out, I guess what, you win the match by having a, a nail put for your tough? But yeah, Britt Baker returning to the ring after a long layoff of, um, well, multiple injuries, I think. I think she had a leg injury and a face injury. Baker takes small down now with the headlock on. Of course, this match, part of AEW's buy in, the pre show, happening earlier on tonight before I started the stream, but uh, we thought we'd go back and just show you what happened. Rip Baker taking it to Big Swole now. Plus, Big Swole has been absolutely terrorizing Britt Baker. Absolutely uncalled for. She's just been, I don't know, at every single opportunity, just being an absolute nuisance for Britt Baker. Being an absolute pain in the tough. Oh, big spinning falcon arrow there by Big Swole. Oh, and the um, Paige's move, Cheetah's move. Which one? The, what, the spinning, the fisherman thing or the spinning falcon arrow? Speaking of Sheila, you'd have to think whoever wins this match out of Swole and Britt Baker will be right in a line for a women's title shot. Oh, and there is a roll up there from uh, Baker. Nearly enough to put, but Swole kicks out of two. You want Sheila to retain. You know, I think Sheila probably will retain. Yo, shout out, uh, what's up, Dav? I, I think that's you, Dav. I know that's your, your channel. Um, how are we? On there, we see Rebel interfering on the outside, trying to get involved. Who, of course, has been pushing Britt Baker around in a wheelchair while she has been injured. Battlegrounds, I am 100% buying that game. It just looks absolutely ridiculous. Oh, and this is, is this for Lockjaw? Oh, is... Wait, what is going on? Oh, the stream is playing, right, okay. I was like, what is that noise? And then another stream has started playing in the background. But there, Britt Baker has picked up the win. Well, true star, spe speaking of Hojo, you think we're going to see Kairi Sane show up in AEW?
the tag team title match, Kenny Omega and Hangman Page against FTR. So yeah, the team of Kenny Omega and Hangman Page defended against FTR. As we see here, Hangman Page, um, FTR really playing mind games with these two. Like, Hangman Page is a raging alcoholic, and FTR getting inside of his head. Also, Kenny Omega, teetotal, offering the Choco Milk uh, on last night's episode, Dynamite. And Kenny turned down the Choco Milk. Oh, um, you see there, Hangman Page, shades of a young Baron Corbin there with that move. Shades of a young Big Boss Man, even. And now the, the cleaner, the best bout machine, Kenny Omega, is in the ring. And he just goes back and tags, tags his partner out again. Uh, tags his partner in, even. See, Kenny and Hangman have been such a great team, such a formidable team since teaming up and winning the tag titles. They weren't a team beforehand. I mean, they were both in the elite together, but they hadn't teamed much together, to my knowledge, other than maybe those multi-man tag matches that are very common over in New Japan from their time there. But yeah, they've been so impressive since they won the titles, and having... Possibly, well, yeah, I'll say it, the best tag team match I've ever seen. Hangman and Kenny against the Young Bucks. But yeah, big punch to the face there from Cash Wheeler of Dax Howard. I don't, I don't know who's who in this team. But yeah, if we're talking best tag team matches I've ever seen, I mean, um, these guys, FTR, back when they were the Revival, against DIY like that if the Kenny and Hangman Bucks match is the best match then I mean DIY and Revival has to be second and yeah that the triple threat match with AOP that was another crazy match this match will steal the show oh it definitely has potential to steal the show like we've seen how good Kenny and Hangman are and we know how good FTR can be in tag team matches. Big rolling thunder there from one of FTR. And the code breaker there, Shades of, of Jericho. Of course, we saw earlier in the Mimosa Mayhem match. Kenny breaks it up, saving those tag titles for his team. These have to be considered two of the best tag teams in the world. You know this match is going to be an absolute barn burner. Big atomic drop there, shades of, shades of a young Rick Rude. And of course, who could forget at the uh, WWE Hall of Fame ceremony when Bret Hart was in the ring and a fan tried to attack him and then this guy just came and flattened him. Also, did not know until I watched um, like some documentary on the WWE network, like something to do with Daniel Bryan, but this guy, Cash Wheeler is like very close friends with Daniel Bryan from like way back in the day. Which I did not really know about. Who will pick up the win? Who will walk out with new well, who will be tag team champions? Will we see new tag team champions? Will we see Hangman Pair? Huge pile driver there. He goes for a pin, but he's made the mistake of trying to pin him in 
the corner over by where Dax Harwood is. It's quick to come in and uh, break it up. Now taunting him. Hangman Page doesn't know when to stop. He should be concentrating on winning this match. He's maybe been on the bevies a bit too much. He's, he's probably drunk right now. Big spinning DDT there. Although Hangman, he gets drunk, but he can still wrestle like an absolute pro. And now he's just, just playing mind games, taunting Cash Wheeler. Yep, Brian Danielson, the Nigel McGuinness, was one hell of a match. So, Nigel, I'm not really... There's a documentary on the network that I watched about Nigel as well. I don't know if it was... Oh no, I think it is a Nigel McGuinness documentary. Like, it's purely about him and it, it basically talks about what happened to him. He, um... I think he, like, nearly got signed. I, like, I forget exactly what happened. I'd have to go back and watch it. But I think he nearly got signed and then he, like, didn't because he had an injury. But he couldn't the surgery because in America you have to like pay loads for like surgery and stuff yeah he was really good like to be honest when Pete Dunne was the UK champion and it looked like no one was ever gonna beat him I thought like I thought Nigel was gonna come out of retirement for like one last match against Pete Dunne uh, and to be fair if, if Nigel McGuinness can ever, like, I don't know what his status is now, like, whether he has to retire because he's not cleared, or whether he just retired because he, like, had enough of it, but if Nigel McGuinness can come back for one last match, I would love to see Nigel McGuinness versus Pete Dunne. Yeah, that would be a hard hit in the face. Speaking of hard hitting, Adam Page just gets a fist to the mouth. No flips, just fists is FTR's motto. Yeah, Corey Graves was, um, was um, back when I first got into indie wrestling, I used to watch, um, there was a show in England called uh, 1PW. And there was this guy on it called Sterling James Keenan, and I always thought he was pretty cool. And it took me absolutely the longest time before I realised that that was Corey Groves. I didn't realise it was the same person. But yeah, there were rumours. I was going to say not long ago, but it probably was like a year or two, maybe even three now. But Corey Graves was possibly coming out of retirement. It's always hard to tell. But yeah, the FTR finish a uh, shatter machine, that, that is cool. Especially when they hit it perfectly, it just looks incredible. Like, awesome move. Wasn't then um, Corey Graves, I think, was the first ever NXT tag champ? With uh, AEW's own pack, who we haven't seen for some time, probably because of the uh, travel restrictions. I was probably stuck in England at the moment. No, Pac's going wild on the time side on the triple vodkas. He's like, away the lads. Go on, watch this. Another big pile driver there from Hangman Page. That's got to be it. Just for two. Dax Howard saying, no, we want those tag team titles. Oh, and this is it. Um, I forgot what that move's called, but that's his finisher. That's got to be it. That is it. Hangman and Kenny retain. 
is what an epic match another fantastic tag team match and look at that big big pile driver as look hangman and kenny but they're friends again now they've retained their titles And Hardy goes straight through with a gut wrench, a suplex. Of course, this is a broken rules match. I don't know 100% quite what that means, but all rules have been turned off in this match. There will be no rules. All rules will be broken. And I think I've just clocked the pun right there. G.O.D. versus The Usos, yes. In fact, I've actually been doing a bit of fantasy booking on my perfect WWE vs New Japan show. And that is one of the matches. And the action spilled to the outside here. Hardy taking it to Sammy. He's looking for revenge after Sammy busted his head open, causing him to have. 13 stitches. That red hair dye in Hardy's hair, a reminder of all that blood that was pouring out of his head after that fear shot. Oh, you only found that out recently, yeah, like, um... Oh, and there it is, Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy has got his revenge already. He was out for blood tonight, and he really took it to Sammy. What a quick match that was. Hardy not wasting any time. Of course, the experience coming to his aid over the, the youth of Sammy. as it looks to be Matt Hardy version 1. Oh no, and there's the delete. This guy is mental. He doesn't know who he is or what, like what he's doing, what character he's playing. Right, we have a huge match up next. The AEW Women's Championship, Hikaru Shida defending against Thunder Rosa. Copyright stuff, so here we go. The NWA Women's Champion Thunder Rosa challenges the AEW Champion Hikaru Shida. Champion versus Champion. But yeah, Hikaru Shida taking it to Thunder Rosa here. She says, Welcome to AEW, but you're going to have to do more than that if you want to. Big knees to the chest there. You're gonna have to do more than that if you wanna walk away with my women's title. Oh, I'm a double underhook backbreaker there. Of course, she does so impressive during her reign in as women's champion, uh, defeating Nyla Rose for the title. Thunder Rosa also being very impressive as um, a win NWA. Defeating, uh, I'm going to say, Alison K for the title. True Star wants to see Rio back in AEW. Yeah, I mean, it is difficult at the moment with, I guess, there's a lot of travel restrictions. And I think Rio was never really like in AEW like full time anyway. Whereas like Shida. I think lives in America and has actually signed a full contract. I'm not sure if Riho has the same con uh, contract or the, yeah, like you say, she still does stardom. So I, um,
you know, maybe it's like a different contract if you can work two promotions. Well, that, that's what happens when you're the AEW Women's World Champion. You can afford to buy two houses. And that is why Thunder Rosa has come to AEW looking to win that title. Because that's what she wants. Oh, and a tombstone pile driver from Shida. We don't often see that from her, but that just means... Shows how much this match means to her. Yes, for two counts. I bet Thunder Rosa wasn't expecting the match to be as tough as it's been as... Oh, the Falcon Arrow! And what is it? Who is this? What is going on here? Oh my god, <laughs> this isn't supposed to happen. <laughs> and Th Thunder Rosa, no. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why that has happened. Alexa Bliss isn't even signed to AEW. What is she doing here in Daly's place? Obviously, The Fiend has been playing with her head and she's got confused and come to the wrong show. That was not scripted or supposed to happen. And these two competitors, Sheeta and Thunder Rosa, are no doubt completely confused by that. As they go up top. Huge back suplex off the top rope. And it's all looking Thunder Rosa at the moment. Can she put her away? Oh, pile driver. And um, what is this now? Ah. Oh. These rip Vince Russo booking this shit. Right? These run ins from people who aren't even in AEW. What is. Well, I don't even know what's happened here. Thunder Rosa obviously distracted with Dragon Screw Leg Rip from Shida. We still don't know what caused the distraction. And the Falcon Arrow. And that put her away. And who Ikaru Shida has retained the title. And still your AEW Women's Champion, Hikaru Shida, coming out victorious of this Champion vs. Champion match. Although Thunder Rosa is so impressive, but just not enough to beat the AEW Women's Champion. Of course, we saw a run in from Alexa Bliss for some reason. I don't know. I, I can only apologise, that wasn't supposed to happen. The Alexa Bliss just going rogue and shooting. But yeah, Hikaru Shida, still your AEW Women's World Champion. But yeah, what a show we've had here at All Out so far and now. It is time for the main event. As we see, John Moxley defend the AEW World Championship against MJF. MJF is cool. No one cuts a promo like MJF. He is awesome on the mic. Yeah, they've really booked MJF so well because I could actually see him like, he's a serious contender here. I could actually see him possibly winning this match. MJF challenges John Moxley for the AEW World Championship in your All Out main event. Of course, this being the main event, we're having a proper introduction. Greg Hamilton has decided to turn up for some reason. I guess Justin Roberts wasn't available. We have a challenger, MJF, Maxwell Jacob Friedman. 
He's better than you and he knows it. And tonight, will he walk away with the AEW Championship to prove it? Of course, MJF has been so impressive. I've said this a lot tonight, but MJF has been so impressive since joining AEW. In fact, I'm not sure if he's even ever lost a match. Defeated the likes of Cody. Oh, and here comes John Moxley, the AEW World Champion. I don't quite know what's happened. He's wearing the title back to front with the gold facing him. I don't know. It, this game, man, 2K20 is like... Just uh, 2K20, that's all I'm saying. That, that's my excuse here. I don't know what's happened to that title. It doesn't have any it doesn't have any gold on it. It's just a it's just like an actual belt to hold his trousers up. <laughs> and that's what they're fighting over. The belt with the gold seems to have disappeared. That's how much of a maniac John Moxley is. He doesn't even we thought Jericho was bad, getting drunk and losing the belt at the steakhouse. Moxley has just lost all the gold from the belt. The introductions here, the challenger, Maxwell Jacob Friedman, looking to win his first world title. John Moxley holding that world title there, that prestigious, shiny AEW world title. Of course, only the second ever world champion. He takes one look at it. Could that be the final look he has? As MJF now looks at it and he says, this is what it's all about tonight. As the referee, that is what they're fighting over. That belt. Referee holds it up high. And we're off. And Moxley straight in with the Bulldog. Moxley really vicious on the attack here. He wants to retain his title. He'll be looking to get this match over as quickly as possible. I think Moxley's going to win. To be fair, I think Moxley will probably win as well. Um, although, actually, I don't know because I don't know who could actually beat Moxley. Like Moxley, when Moxley loses the belt, it would have to be like to someone like MJF because I don't know who could actually. Oh, a big pile driver there. He could be losing it to MJF right now. Yeah, it's the type, the curse of the title, isn't it? You touch the title, you are not winning it. And Taz, yeah. MJF stomping a mud hole over on Moxley now. Oh, stretching. MJF stretching Moxley out like he's a stretch Armstrong at all. Big uppercut there. Do you think MJF wrestles such a a technical, such a finesse style that you know he's really not sure what to do with Moxley's unorthodox brawling? Do you see MJF, a tactician, pinpointing a section on Moxley and uh, concentrating on it? True Style wants to see. The Hardys as the AW Tag Team titles, uh, champions even. <laughs> um, I don't think it's going to happen because that interview with Chris Van Vliet uh, talking to Matt Hardy, Matt said that Jeff has about a year and eight months left on his WWE contract. So I think unless Hardy gets fired from WWE, he's going to be in WWE for the next two years or so. I mean, 
Uh, do you think, like, if Matt Hardy can last another two years, then, you know, maybe. Um, but yeah, you're right, it would be cool to see them, WWE Impact, Ring of Honor, and AEW Tag Team Champions. A drop kick there from MJF. Um, well, yeah, exactly. I mean, he can't wrestle like he used to, but I mean, he's still so popular. Like, they absolutely love him. Of course, winning that many titles, I think the last time we saw something like that would have been the Dudleys, the uh, WWE, WCW, ECW. Uh, the NWA IWGP Tag Champions. And yeah, you, I think I think you um, told me the other day you wanted Ray to have the title again, but I think if we see a Mysterio... Yeah, Team 3D. If we see Mysterio with the title again, it's probably going to be Dominic Mysterio at this point. I mean, Dominic Mysterio has been looking very impressive, and uh, probably got very bright future. Oh, the paradigm shift! John Moxley is not allowed to use that move in this match, but he, he's done it anyway, and the referee hasn't called for it. And John Moxley, Moxley, oh, MJF is going to have words about this. He is not going to be pleased. That match, uh, that move was supposed to be banned from this match. You see the lunatic fringe there bouncing off the ropes. MJF thought he had it here with Wardlow with a distraction with the schoolboy pin. Big move there on the outside from MJF. Of course, Moxley hits the paradigm fifth and gets. A free count, and well, I mean, MJF is going to. You have to think MJF would claim, but he's the champion now. You see Moxley celebrating. Yeah, where, where is Tony Khan? You'd have to think a ruling has to be made here. Of course, Tony Khan was on the AEW media call earlier today. Um, it's lucky that was earlier and not now, because he would be getting absolutely grilled by the pundits. Looks like John Moxley has retained the championship, even though using a move that was banned. And what is the fallout of that going to be? MJF is going to have words to say about that on Dynamite. M MJF will probably claim that he's the champion following that. But yeah, that is going to bring us to the end of the stream nicely and to the end of the show all out we thought we'd have a definitive champion at the end but we still do not know who the true AEW champion is um so yeah thank you to everyone who has joined um especially thanks Truestar you've been here from the start but yeah that's been a lot of fun big thanks to everyone who has come and got involved all the new followers tonight. I got loads of new followers from that raid so thank you to all of you guys. So yeah thank you everyone for coming and getting involved and I will catch you all again next time.